Welcome back to my channel. This week is one of my most very favorite weeks of the year and I can't wait to have you along the way and that's because my baby chicks are hatching. There is nothing more that brings me so much joy than seeing those little guys hatch. We are on day 18 and it takes 21 days for them to fully hatch so we are on lockdown today so that means we're going to do some egg handling, take a look at what's going on inside those eggs, pull out any that are no longer developing because I definitely don't want exploding eggs at my incubator and then I'll bring you along for the hatch. I'll also show you how I'm setting up my brooders for the chicks as they progress through different age cycles and all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at how those eggs are developing. So I have two different incubators running right now. This is my main one, the Brinzi incubator. It holds 28 eggs. I love it because it automatically controls the humidity for me. So I can just set it to what I want. So I had it set to 40% humidity. It's holding at 41, pretty good. The temperature 99.5. So it's a really hands-off incubator. And so most of my eggs are in here for my standard 40%, but I have a second incubator going as well. So this is incubator number two. This is my Chick Cozy incubator. I love this one as well. It's a great kind of budget pick. I think it's around 150 bucks where the Brinzy one is, I think over 400 at this point, the price keeps going up. So you do have to manually control the humidity, but this one I'm not doing anything at all because what I have in here are black copper Moran eggs. So they're really, really dark and they have thick shells, which means that they need low, low humidity when incubating. If I would have kept these guys in the other incubator at 40%, they'd all probably drown. So I love having a second incubator so you can customize a hatch for that. So I'm having them going at 25% and I've just added zero water in here. We're doing a, a dry hatch. Okay, I have my little candler on. Let's take a peek. Sorry the lighting in here is terrible, but welcome to my office slash food preservation room and food storage and all the goodies. So <laughs> this is where I have the incubator set up. I can put a gate up so the dogs don't come in here. That would be a nightmare once the chicks start hatching and they're peeping away. Too many temptations. So this is a safe room. So we have the eggs all candled. So we figured out which ones are good, which ones are bad. I went ahead and pulled out those three and so next we need to get them ready for the hatch so we need to do a couple things we need to take the egg turner out because right now they're being flopped around every hour and they need time to just lay and rest and get themselves oriented for the hatch and then we also need to bump the humidity because they're going to want a little extra moisture to kind of lubricate the inside of the eggs so they don't get dried out and all sh shrink wrapped so i'll show you that next step i like to move the eggs to an egg carton so we can get the egg turners out of here. Get all this out of here. And I'm now remembering there's a spot for a second sponge and that often gets the humidity up high enough. So let me go find my sponge. <laughs> so this is the sponge I use, just a basic kitchen sponge. And I cut it into little strips. And I'm trying to work quickly so that <laughs> the eggs don't stay out too long. There we go. So I'm just going to manually wet this one because it's not going to drip in there. This is where the water has been dripping into this sponge. So we'll do dual sided humidity control for this last phase. One last marking that I've done during the candling for these eggs is put an X on the lowest portion of the air cell. Do you see on this one where it has a high side and a low side? So that X or that low side is where the chick is going to pop out with its beak. So I want to lay it down X side up so I can watch the action 
and make sure that I can keep track of how many have pipped and who has not. And there we go, everyone is laid flat on the floor with their X's up, so I should be able to watch the action. The last thing I might do, I'm just gonna close it up and let the eggs warm back up or stay warm, is I do like to separate the eggs so that I know who hatched from what egg, because once it gets started, it just becomes mass chaos. So I have these great mesh produce bags that I put them in. I used to make dividers and that was also a mess. Chicks were jumping over it or they'd get halfway stuck and then one of them got their beaks, beak stuck in the fan and that was awful. So don't recommend doing that anymore. The mesh grocery bags are awesome. So I'm gonna go find those, but let these guys sit for a little bit longer before I start dividing them out for that. And let's not forget to bump the humidity. There we go. All the way to 65. All right, I got everyone sorted and tucked in. These guys I all left free together since I'll clearly be able to tell them apart. So the countdown begins. So I just got home from running some errands. I usually go every other week to do a sweep and get raw milk and all the good stuff. So I picked up some really exciting stuff today that I had to show you guys. So these are silkies. I was able to find a great MPIP hatchery down in Forest Lake. And silkies are supposed to be well known for going broody. And I don't really have any broody hens right now or anymore. I used to have some awesome broody hens. And that's honestly my favorite way to go. They can hatch and raise the chicks for you but none of mine have gone broody this year so I heard silkies are supposed to be really good mothers and all that so we're gonna give you a try so my chicks in the incubator are gonna hatch in two days so these guys just hatched yesterday I think so they should all be about the same size I'm so excited yay little babies they're just so cute look at this little guy I think I have two colors buff and partridge so that'll be fun Hi, welcome to the farm. So I grabbed all my supplies to set up my little baby brooder. It's such a far cry from what I used to use at our old homestead. We had the poultry palace and Ryan built the, me these beautiful stackable brooders that were just awesome. Either that or I was using a really large cardboard box that was in our shop and that was able to fill or hold quite a few chicks and that was great. But now we're in this tiny cabin. The big box won't fit and I'm scared to put it in the shop because we have three cats living in the shop now. And so I'm a little limited on my brooder options until my new brooders get built. So Ryan is building me a couple smaller brooders that I'm really excited about. I think they're gonna be great once they're done, but they're not quite done yet. So I kinda have a brooder Jimmy rigged up in my office. I'll give you a peek at what I have going on in there. So here it is. We are just using a laundry basket for now in my office. So we're just doing a make it work moment and laundry basket. If you are planning on using that, I highly recommend adding some cardboard to the side. Otherwise they're going to fall out of the holes and that'll be no good. But what I like to do for a brooder is obviously you have your water feed and I like to put a little bit of grit in there. You're going to notice some little grit granules in here. And I'm not a huge fan of heat lamps. I prefer these heat plates. But before I explain why, I'm gonna go get the little chicks. I can hear them peeping away. They're pretty cold in this box after their big long trip. So let's go ahead and get them under the heat. Come on, little guys. I always like to make sure that they get a drink of water when they're new. There you go, now go under the heat. Just dip their beak in there and they'll automatically drink. It's pretty simple. Get your little drink. There you go. So the mama hen heater. So I like it for multiple reasons. It's way more energy efficient compared to a heat lamp. It's also definitely not a fire risk. It also mimics a mama hen way more than a heat lamp. So you can just kind of tuck under there and I also like to tilt it so this side is lower than this side so they can kind of pick and choose what, how much heat they want. And it's just more natural as far as the light goes. Big red light or even white. Sometimes there are white heat lamps, which I definitely don't recommend. It's just not natural. They need that darkness and they have a circadian rhythm just like we do, so. 
Good morning. I woke up to some peeping in the incubator. I'm so excited. It's officially 21 days and it takes 21 days for chicks to hatch. We had a few overachievers. They're out already. I wasn't expecting them quite that soon, but let's go take a look. So here are my black copper morans. They're typically the last to hatch, so I'm not gonna panic just yet. Now, unfortunately, the big negative with this Brinzia incubator is the viewing is not quite as good because it has a double wall and kind of junk gets between there, so it's kind of blurry, but do you guys see the movement? You have a little chick in there, and I have my separator bags in there as well, the produce bags, so that also makes it hard to see, but there's one back here. There's one there, there's one there. I definitely have my eyes on these death layers. I really hope they hatch because I spent a small fortune on them. <laughs> and they're just really cool chickens. I can't wait for those. So I'm not gonna open the lid of the incubator yet. It's really important to not let the cool dry air in while these guys are hatching because it can shrink wrap them. So these guys are fine in their little produce bags. Plus their chirping is gonna help encourage the rest of the eggs to hatch. So. We'll leave them in there until probably the end of the day and then I'll do a sweep and pull more out. So we'll let these guys sit for a few more hours and then we'll see what we've got. Oh, I heard some chirping while I was over here trying to get some work done. Welcome to my office. It's a bit chaotic, but we're making it work. But I heard some chirping and look! We have some updates. You can see there's a little pip hole on one of my death layer eggs. There's also some pip holes over here. So this egg and some pip holes there. So more are coming. I'll try and capture one as it's hatching. And we're starting to get some action on the black copper morans. You can see there's a pip here, there's a pip there. And these guys are rocking. We'll see if we can get some of the rocking in there. There you go. You can see the second one back. Rocking and rolling. We have some action going on in here. Now you little chicky, get out of the way. We can't see. Do you see behind it though? That chick has almost completely unzipped from the egg. So it's going well so far, but it's at the point where I need to do a sweep and pull some of the chicks out that have been in here for a long time. So I'm gonna grab as many as I can quickly so that the ones that are still currently hatching don't basically get shrink wrapped. So this is always the nerve wracking part <laughs> where I have to work quickly and carefully and hopefully don't compromise the rest that are hatching. And one of the hatching bags that I can see in here, it looks like there's a quite a bit of blood stains on the netting itself. So I definitely want to take a look in there and see what's going on. I also have little leg bands. So I like to label the chicks when they come out of the incubator. So I remember who is who, who came out of what kind of egg. Let's do this guy first. He was very ready. This was the very first one to hatch. So you have been ready for a long time. You've been causing all sorts of chaos in there. <laughs> Let's do the bloody one next. I'm a little nervous about this one. Just grab them all together in the basket. Okay, let's see. 
There you can see the blood stains on the side. So we have chick number one. You look okay. Chick number two. You look okay. Chick number three looks okay. And we still have one egg left. And this one's not bloody. So must have just been a little bit of a traumatic hatch. Everyone else is looking okay. So I'm going to put this one back in the incubator. You guys get blue bands on your feet. Blue for you. I picked blue because these guys came out of blue eggs from my lavender Americanas. Dad is a Rhode Island Red, so probably end up laying green eggs. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move these guys to the brooder. Now same thing as before, I'm gonna dip their beak in there, let him get his first little drink. Oh boy, that was a lot. Go join your friends. So the silkies are under here. We're gonna have a lot of chicks by the end. It's gonna be fun. little guys. They have cute little stripes on the back. I love the brown ones. Are you guys cute? Oh, let's get you to your friends. This one next. So cute. This one must be from my Dominique hens. He has the, the little dot on top of their head. Cutie pie. One more. Some complainers. So cute. There they are. These guys came out of brown eggs. It's hard to know which of my hens laid those since so many lay brown eggs. Okay, let's get these guys to their friends too. And oh my gosh, I just turned around and look at this. Definitely getting a lot of action on those black copper morans. The death layers are definitely starting to come out anytime on those. For some reason, these breeder eggs are just taking forever where everyone that has hatched so far has been from my own flock. I think we're only waiting on two eggs from my flock. There's one here, so it's kind of a cream egg, and one over here is a blue egg. So we'll see if those hatch. Okay, I thought I'd break myself away from all of the excitement and head over to our dry cabin. So I wanna show you the brooders that Ryan has been building me. He told me that they're finished, but I haven't seen them yet. So I'm excited to take a peek. They were looking pretty cute last time I saw them. I'm hoping we can install them right into the chicken coop so we can start the introductions right away. And then we ultimately have a chicken tractor, which I love for teenage chicks. So when they're maybe three weeks old and can manage the ladder and can spend some time away from the heat, then I'll move them to there. And then they'll eventually move in freely with the big chickens. So it'll be a little bit of a delicate dance. And then the meat chickens show up end of May. So be chicken land for a little while, which will be fun. Okay, we're almost inside. So if you missed on one of my earlier videos, we do have a dry cabin. So it's really tiny. I think it's maybe 300 square feet. It's no running water outhouse back there. And we're mostly just using it for woodworking projects, like a wood shop. Look at those. Ryan did a great job. We have little latches on here and that should be lots of room so be able to put bedding in here i'll put my heat plate on the side and then probably food and water over here and then they have plenty of room to run back and forth and two of them so that i think i'll probably start with all of them down here and once they get older and more rambunctious that will split them in two different groups so ryan's almost home he had to go down to minneapolis today actually go for a a meeting or event for work so he'll be home in a little bit we're gonna hang out it's my birthday tomorrow i think it's just gonna be rainy and kind of junky out but that's all right we'll make the most of it so i think i'll check back in tomorrow when the hatch is complete so you guys can get a final look at the baby chickies so I'll catch you all in the morning good morning the hatch is officially complete it went pretty well i'll show you the little chicks that i have they're so cute and here's the babies Everyone else that has hatched, I'm just so pleased. They're all doing really well, getting along with the existing Polishes. Everyone's about the same size, so that works out. Mm -hmm. 